brought Scorpion in and my partner knew he was dealing fundamentally with his equal, dealing with a less formidable technical powerhouse than Scorpion would have created an unfavorable outcome for me. There's an old saying that experts are expensive, but amateurs are ridiculously expensive. Scorpion came in under budget. With Scorpion, Scorpion is more managing me, whereas with the other companies, I'm having to manage them. The first thing they do after defining scope is they choose the best of the best of the best to work with you. My name is Peter and I'm founder and CEO of a very large software platform. We're out of beta. Uh, stable code, it's very large, about 600,000 lines of finished code. The company was primarily myself and my partner. I had founded the company and funded the company, and then I had a brilliant CTO that brought everything to production code. A great combo. And over the course of working together for close to six years, bringing the project to life out of beta, at the moment that we came to the point of realizing we're coming to market, it became unfortunately vividly clear that his goals and my goals were very, very different. The concierge model makes a ton of sense in today's development world, software development world. And fundamentally what it says in Walter's vision is Scorpion's intention is to gather the best minds, technical minds in the world, that want to work together, that like to work together, because they like working with like-minded, brilliant others, and therefore have a pool or a group of people then that you can choose from to choose the absolute best person for the best job. And when you do that, you go from the functional specification of what you want to do to defining scope and then figuring out who you need and going out and getting the best of those people. And as a result, you get the best bang for your buck and the best quality. It's a really interesting concept. The concierge model, the way it worked for me, was those people knew exactly what they were going to do and they drove the business to exactly match scope and nothing went wrong. So therefore, the concierge concept has a huge value to me because as I move forward, I go to Scorpion to my virtual CTO. We decide what we need to do. He goes out and finds the right people. We do functional spec, define scope, get going, and we do it in a very quality way. That's the kind of thing that I can talk to investors about and have it make sense. It's a very, very different way of doing business that so far has worked very well for me. The concept of a virtual CTO uh, is an interesting one. I didn't know about it. I'm embarrassed that I didn't know about it until I began to work with Scorpion. And my experience has been superb. So with Scorpion's concept of concierge service, and in part that means choosing a CTO, and who is also a part-time CTO, um, my experience has been phenomenal. So my choice, the person that is with me, I feel fully confident leading forward into the coming years. We can finish each other's words. He's really the right person personality-wise. He's the right person technically. And it's, it's a great concept. It's a great idea and it works really well. I frankly, don't think the idea would work with a company that didn't have the concierge concept like Scorpion does. The point is, part-time CTO sounds nice, easy to say, but that person needs to be the right person. How do you find him? But that part-time CTO is really only of value in terms of how well he can handle his high-level skills, but which people he can get underneath him for the particular job at the hand. So a part-time CTO that does not have a vast number of talented individuals at his choice kind of doesn't work. And so 
The concept, therefore, in my mind of part-time CTO is linked to the concierge model. And without that, it sounds nice, but it's not really there.